Okay, so in this video, we're in Microsoft Word, and I wanted to show you how to create automatic table of contents. So I'm gonna start off with a document that obviously contains some headings, and I want these headings to feature in my table of contents. Now up here, I have a main heading, and what I need to do is I need to tell Word that this is a main heading. This is before I even try and create the table of contents. So I click into that heading, and on the home tab of my ribbon, I go to the styles gallery. And up here, you'll see that there is a style called heading one. And what I'm gonna do is apply the heading one style to that heading. Now you can see it does kind of dictate to you the look of the heading. Now, if I just undo that and say I had a format I'd already applied to the heading, maybe I had a particular color I wanted to apply, a particular size, maybe a particular font. Now what I can do with that heading selected, I can right click on heading one and update heading one to match selection. Down here, I have my first heading two. So heading two is essentially a subheading. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click on heading two. If I don't like the look that it applies for heading two, remember what you can do is just apply your format so let's choose a different color, change the font size, change the font that I'm using, then right click on heading two, update heading to match selection. This is also a heading two, so I can go up here and apply the heading two style to that heading. Applying styles is a heading three. Now another way of changing the look of the heading style is before you apply it, is just to right click on the heading style and go to modify, and in here, you can apply any setting you want in terms of the look of the heading. So I'll go for 12, and let's go for a yellow color, a gold color. So then I can click into that particular heading, click on the heading style, and it applies that style to the heading. I'm also going to make collapsing headings a heading three. Online video is a heading two, using embed codes, a heading three. Gallery elements are heading three. Image layout are heading three. Design elements are heading two. Themes are heading three. Headers and footers are heading three. Tables are heading three. And that reaches the end of the document. Now what I want to do is I want to place the table of contents underneath this main heading. So I click at the end of the main heading, press enter. And then to insert the table of contents, you go to the references tab on your ribbon, over to table of contents, and then you've got some built in table of contents. Now for automatic table of contents, you want to use either automatic table one or automatic table two. The difference really is in the heading that we can see here, you've either got contents or table of contents. So I'm gonna go for automatic table two, and it automatically picks up the headings wherever I've applied one of those heading styles in my document. Now, if I was to change one of these headings, say I change this heading here using video effectively in PowerPoint. Now I'd want my table of contents to pick up that edit. And what you can do is click on the table of contents and click on this update table button. Now here I have two choices. I can update page numbers only, or I can update the entire table. Well, I'll need to update the entire table to pick up the edit on that heading. You can see now it says using video effectively in PowerPoint. Now, what if I add a new heading? Let's go to the end of the document and I'll create a heading called audio. And I'll just add some text at the end of the document. Equals rand, I'll have three paragraphs of six lines. And I'm gonna make that heading, the audio heading, a heading two. Go back up to the top of the document and I'm going to refresh my table of contents. And it picks up that new heading. The other thing about these table of contents entries is that they act as hyperlinks. So if I control click on one of these table of contents entries, it will take me to the relevant part of the document. Now, one thing I don't like about my table of contents is the fact that it includes the main heading. I only want it to include heading two and heading three entries in my document. 
Now to make that change, I need to click into the table of contents, go to references, back to table of contents, and then custom table of contents. Now you can see here, I can choose how many levels to show in my table of contents. At the moment, I'm showing three. Now if I reduce that to two and then click on OK, it'll ask me whether I want to replace this table of contents. But it hasn't done what I wanted it to do because now it's including heading one entries and heading two entries. I want it to include heading two and heading three entries. So let's go back to customize table of contents. I do want to show two levels, but what I need to do is go to options and I've got to match a heading style with a table of contents level. At the moment, heading one is being used for TOC level one. Well, I don't want to include heading one. Heading two is the first top level I want to use and heading three is the second top level I want to use. If I click on OK and then on OK again, replace the table of contents, I now have the correct headings within my table of contents. Last thing we're gonna to do to this table of contents is add a bit of formatting. I want the heading twos to appear in bold and the heading threes to appear italicized. But to do that, I need to go back to the home tab on my ribbon. And in the styles group, I need to click on this launcher button. Now, these are the styles that are being used in the document. And if I scroll down, I can see three styles for table of contents, top one, top two, and top three. So I need to modify the top one style and the top two style. To do that, I go to the little drop down and then to modify. And if I want to make the entries bold, I just click on this bold button. You can see they're bold now in the table of contents. And then for top two, I can modify that so that they're italic. And if I wanted to indent them slightly more within the table of contents, I can just use this indent button, click OK and it's applied that change to the table of contents. Now what I've shown you here is an example where we had a document that didn't have heading styles applied to it. A lot of the time you're going to have a document that has some sort of in-house styles applied to it, but they're not the heading styles that I've shown you up here. So how do you make a table of contents in that scenario? So I've got a document here that has styles applied to it, but if I click into this heading here, you can see that it's not heading one. It's some sort of custom style that someone in your organization has made, main doc heading. Same here, if I click in this style, it just says subhead. And then this style, sub subhead. So whoever created this document didn't realize they could use the inbuilt heading styles. Instead, they've created their own styles. Now that's absolutely fine. You can still create a table of contents using these custom styles. So what you would do is you decide where you want your table of contents. You go to references, table of contents, custom table of contents. Now I only want to show two levels and then I go to options. At the moment, the top levels are linked with heading one and heading two. I need to delete those entries and then scroll down this list until I can see the headings I want to link with a top level. So that's subhead, which would be top level one, and sub subhead, which would be top level two. If I click on OK, and then on OK again, it will create my table of contents based on those custom heading styles. Now, the next scenario I'm going to show you is where there are no headings in your document whatsoever, yet you still want to create a table of contents. Okay, so in this document, I only have one heading, which is the main heading, but the rest of the document doesn't have any headings whatsoever. But what I want to do is show in the table of contents the first few words of some of these paragraphs. So for example, I want a table of contents entry, say for this first sentence and this first paragraph. Now the trick here is to select that sentence, and I'm gonna use the heading two style for this particular sentence, but I want the sentence to appear exactly as it does at the moment. So what I do is I right click on the heading two style and update heading two to match selection. Then I'm gonna scroll down and select a few words in this sentence and also apply the heading two style. 
and I'll also do the same down here. Okay, so I've got three table of contents entries. I want my table of contents here. I go to references, table of contents, custom table of contents. I only want one level. If I go to options, I'll change that level from heading one to heading two. Click on OK, click on OK, and it creates a table of contents showing the first few words of each of those paragraphs. Now, one final tip for you, and that is to show you how to ensure that a table of contents is always updated before you print. The last thing you want to do is to print out a massive document and later to discover that the table of contents is wrong. It might be wrong in terms of the headings or in terms of the page numbers. So to avoid that problem, the little setting in Word, if you go to File and then Options, Display, down here you'll see Update Fields Before Printing. If you tick on that and click on OK, that will ensure that your table of contents will always update whenever you print it. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.